Creating your own newsletter for sharing updates with colleagues or customers is simple with a customizable newsletter template. Hi, I'm Grace, and in this video tutorial, I'll show you how to create a newsletter template in Affinity Publisher. This template is modern, colorful, and also super easy to adapt with your own content. And I've also included a free downloadable template for both Affinity Publisher and Adobe InDesign. As well as access to Affinity Publisher, we'll also be dipping into Affinity Photo to edit some of the photos for the newsletter. You'll also need to download a few fonts and images to use on your newsletter design. You can find the links for these in the details below the video. Okay, ready? Right, let's get started. So first things first, open Affinity Publisher and go to File and New. Select Print from the options along the top of the window and set the page width to 8.5 inches and the page height to 11 inches. And you can deselect facing pages. Under the margins options, set a margin width of 0.5 inches for all sides of the page and also add a bleed width of 0.25 inches and then go ahead and click create. Okay, so go to view and guides manager and from here increase the number of columns to three and then click close. Double click on page one in the pages panel to make sure that you're on the main page of your document and not on the master page. Then go to the layers panel and click on the add layer button at the bottom right of the panel and name this layer background. Repeat that to create two more layers, naming them color and type. And then you can select both the color and type layers and lock them by clicking the padlock icon at the top right. Then go to the swatches panel and choose add global color from the drop down menu at top right. Name the swatch newspaper white and set the levels below to cyan zero, magenta eight, yellow nine and key to zero. Then click add. Repeat this to create four more CMYK swatches. So we've got coral, which is cyan zero, magenta 81, yellow 78 and key zero. Blue is going to be cyan 79, magenta 47, yellow zero and key zero as well. And yellow, which is cyan four, magenta 26, yellow 88 and key zero. And finally, your last swatch is going to be green, which is cyan 73, magenta zero, yellow 71 and key zero. With your colour palette now ready to use, we can start getting creative with our newsletter design. So working on the background layer, select the rectangle tool from the tools panel and drag across the whole of page one, extending the edges up to the bleed. From the swatches panel, set the fill colour to newspaper white. To divide up the newsletter layout further, we can also add rows across the page. So to do this, head back to view and guides manager as we did earlier. And now you want to increase the number of rows to five and set the width of the gutter to 0.01 inches Then click close. Okay, so working on the color layer, use the rectangle tool to create a shape on the page, filling the top three rows of the right hand column. And from the swatches panel, set the fill color of this to blue. Create a second shape across the bottom left corner of the page, meeting the bottom right corner of the blue rectangle and you can set the fill of this shape to yellow. Add a third shape in the bottom right corner of the page and this one set the fill to green. So the style of this newsletter design means that it will just look better with all the images set in black and white instead of color. And you can use Affinity Photo to quickly adjust color images to black and white and resave them for using on your newsletter. So to do that, open your color image in Affinity Photo and duplicate the background layer working on the copied layer. From the adjustments drop down menu at the bottom of the layers panel, choose black and white. In the black and white window that opens, adjust the color sliders until you're happy with the result. And then you can exit the window and file export the image as a JPEG file. Back in Publisher, switch to the Picture Frame Rectangle tool and create a frame across the top left corner of the page. Go to File and Place, 
choose your edited image and click open. Double click inside the picture frame to select the image directly and scale it until you're happy with the position. Here I've extended the height of the image by using the color picker tool to pick up a gray color from the top of the image and applied this to the fill of the image frame. I then use the transparency tool to fade the top of the photo by directly selecting the image inside the frame and then clicking the tool from bottom to top. Use the rectangle tool to create a tall shape over the top of two thirds of the photo and set the fill color of this to red. With the shape still selected, choose multiply from the blending menu at the top of the layers panel and then select all the other coloured shapes and apply a multiply effect to these as well. Use the picture frame rectangle tool to create an image frame across the right half of the yellow rectangle. Go to file and place and drop another black and white image into the frame. On the image frame, right click and arrange and choose move to back. Okay, create another image frame, this time over the top of the green rectangle. And a good tip, if you need to hide the top or side of an image, you can use the transparency tool to create a subtle fade on any visible edges. Then as before, right click and arrange and move to back. Use the Pitch Frame Ellipse tool to create a circular image frame over the bottom of the blue rectangle. File, place an image before right clicking and arrange and move to back as we did before. And then you can lock the color layer and unlock the top layer type. Use the Frame Text tool to create a text frame to the left side of the red shape, typing in one. From the character and paragraph panels, set the font to Liber Grotesque Bold. And from the swatches panel, set the font color to red. From the layers panel, adjust the blending mode of the text frame to multiply. Okay, so repeat this to create a second number text frame above the yellow shape. Then create a larger number three text frame to the left of the blue shape. And finally, add a number four to the right side of the green rectangle. Create another text frame across the top left corner of the page, typing in the title of the newsletter. Set the font of this to Akana Bold, all caps, and reduce the tracking, which is the letter spacing, to minus 40%. For a bit of colour contrast, you can set the font colour of text over the coloured shape to Newspaper White, and any outline text to red. You could also add the issue number and date to the top right corner. And for this, you can set the font to Akana Bold as before. Use the frame text tool to create a smaller text frame to the left side of the red rectangle. Type in the first article heading, setting the font to Akana Black and the font size to around 14, 1, 4 points.
Create a new frame for the start of the body text, setting this to Ava Bold, size 8 points. Then create more linked text frames for body text by clicking on the red arrow icon at the bottom right corner of the text frame. And then click again to create a linked text frame. You can arrange these into two columns, adjusting the font colour of text in each to improve contrast against the background. And then copy and paste the title and body text frames to populate other areas of your publisher newsletter layout. You can also create pull quotes set in a Akana black across the bottom of the red corner, for example, setting the font size to around 21 points, all caps and the tracking to 40%. You can copy and paste the quote text frame to create a second pull quote above the yellow corner, adjusting the font colour to match. The final green square is a good place to list contact details, a web address or social media handles. Set the font of this to a Akana black and a newspaper white font colour. Okay, brilliant. So when you finish working on your newsletter design, it's time to export your template as a PDF, ready for sending to print. So make sure first to file save your work before heading back up to the file menu and choosing export. In the window that opens, choose PDF from the icon options at the top and then select PDF press ready from the preset menu. Make sure the raster DPI is set to 300 and also it's really important that the include bleed box is checked. Then you can go ahead and click export. Name your file, Select a folder to save it into and then hit save. So you can send the exported PDF straight off to the printers. Awesome work. Your Terra Flyer template is finished. Great job. In this tutorial, you've picked up a wide range of skills and techniques for how to create publisher newsletter templates, from setting up a blank newsletter layout to creating color swatches, placing images and formatting typography to create a stylish and contemporary business newsletter template. If you want to compare your design with my own, make sure to download the completed newsletter template. It's also available as an InDesign template as well. My name is Grace and a big thank you again for watching this Envato Tuts Plus video tutorial and I hope to see you for more design tutorials soon.